Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Alabama lawmakers move to eliminate all marriage licenses. Texas school districts wage a legal war against Christian cheerleaders. And Florida wants to let felons vote in future elections. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The state of Alabama is debating legislation which would eliminate marriage licenses or at least, at least not require judges to sign off on them. Fox News reports that Alabama lawmakers may be waving the white flag of surrender in the culture wars, now advancing a bill that could eliminate marriage licenses entirely, in turn helping judges avoid homosexual marriage licenses as a matter of their conscience, so they'll be able to opt out, but nobody will be able to get marriage licenses, perhaps in the conservative state. The bill's sponsor, Republican Alabama State Senator Greg Albritton, said in an interview with Fox News, quote, no one particularly likes changing our law, I'll tell you that. However, under the circumstances, it's the best thing we can do, end quote. Albertson denies any attempt at denigrating marriage as some social conservative critics charge. The Republican says that his bill is a practical solution for the state in response to the United States Supreme Court who struck down homosexual marriage bans like the one in the Alabama state constitution in the 2014 decision in Obergefell versus Hodges. State Senator L. Britton said, quote, we would not have changed this had it not been for Obergefell. But without the change, the law, the Alabama law, remains in conflict with Obergefell. So we got to make some changes to the law to come into compliance." End quote. Alabama state law has long defined marriage as one between one man and one woman and has given probate judges discretion in whether or not to issue homosexual marriage licenses. But after the US Supreme Court's Obergefell ruling, then Alabama Supreme Court Justice Roy Moore instructed probate judges to use their power to deny homosexual couples marriage licenses because that was Alabama's state law and constitution. The conflicting orders led to Moore's suspension from the court. Al Britton's legislation, which was approved by the Alabama Senate on January 16th, is now going to the state house, and it could end the practice of any probate judges issuing any marriage licenses to anyone. The bill now goes before a committee in the house that is being considered on Wednesday. The bill does not stop the state from recognizing marriages, whether they be from straight or homosexual couples, but marriages would still be recorded by the state any time a couple files an affidavit with a judge and it would not require a judge's signature, just the couple's signature to announce that they were married, hopefully in a church. Senator L. Britton said, quote, it removes the discretion from the judges the judges can no longer say yes or no to any of the marriages. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the move has generated pushback from well-known social conservatives who say it amounts to giving up the fight for traditional marriage between one man and one woman. Mm -hmm. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have Senator Al Britton, he's debating these bills on the floor of the Senate, got it through the Senate, it's going to the House, they're gonna debate this. We have couples in Alabama who wanna get married. 
Some of them are homosexual. We have judges who have been forced, apparently under the Obergefell decision, to issue homosexual marriage licenses. And those judges, many of them in Alabama, are conservative and Christian. Now, can they, as Kim Davis did in Kentucky, opt out of putting their personal signature on those marriage licenses? Maybe, maybe not. But those are just the human actors in the story. Where are the spirits in this story? Well, I believe the Spirit of God is influencing people who do what is right, and the spirit of the devil and the demonic spirits are influencing those who do what is wrong. So you can almost always discern the spirits involved in the story by looking at the human morality and the human choices that are being made. In one case, there might be a homosexual couple who's trying to force a judge to sign their marriage license, and not only are they participating in sexual immorality, listening to that demonic spirit, but they are trying to force this judge to do evil. And on the other side, you have the judge who is being tempted, I suppose, to sin and endorse their marriage. And many judges are saying no to the devil and they're listening to the Spirit of God who would say, don't compromise your conscience. Don't put your name on that marriage certificate. And you can see the spirits involved in the situation. For example, Roy Moore. He took such a great stand for traditional marriage that it cost him his career. You know, sometimes there's a price to listening to God. In fact, this is what Jesus says about marriage. Jesus defined marriage between one man and one woman when he said in Matthew 19, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name for the legislators in Alabama that you will give them the wisdom of Solomon to split the baby in this, uh, metaphorically, in this decision. That they will allow freedom for conservative judges to opt out of endorsing other people's sin and yet at the same time, find a way to be compliant with whatever the Supreme Court is going to push upon Alabama so that no more honorable judges must be fired the way that Roy Moore was fired. Father, we pray your blessing on the state of Alabama in these matters in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Texas school is fighting back against Christian cheerleaders. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. 
by becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story today comes from Fox News, Todd Starnes reporter, who says that Texas school district and officials there are now waging a legal battle fighting back against Christian cheerleaders who already won their court case, but now the school wants to force them to stop holding up Jesus banners. For the past six years, a Texas school district has been waging legal warfare against a group of high school cheerleaders who wrote Bible verses on football run-through banners. Imagine that, cheerleaders cheering for Jesus. Well, in October, the Texas Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the cheerleaders. And they are at County Independent Schools and the Texas Ninth Circuit Court declared, quote, cheerleader's speech expressed on the run-through banners is best characterized as the pure private speech of the students, end quote. In other words, it's okay to praise Jesus even at a Texas football game. Well, the Texas School District has now appealed that decision to the Texas Supreme Court. The school administrators still want to silence or censor the Christian cheerleader's speech. School District Attorney Thomas Brandt wrote the following, quote, the banners were held by public school cheerleaders while they were cheering for the school's football team, while they were in a uniform at a school-sponsored event, and while they were on the school's football field, which to which access was limited by the school, end quote. And that's his argument, because they were in a school uniform, they had to be speaking on behalf of the school. No, 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 no. That's like a Navy chaplain wearing a Navy chaplain's uniform and praying in Jesus' name and not speaking on behalf of the government. Just because you're wearing the clothes doesn't mean you forfeit your First Amendment rights. But Fox News continues, the cheerleaders are represented by First Liberty Institute, one of the nation's top religious law firms. Attorney Jeremy Dice said the cheerleaders, quote, have a right to be able to craft messages of their choosing on paper that they purchased using paint that they had bought. This is the private speech of these cheerleaders. And for the school district to censor that speech violates the Constitution. The school district has fought us every step along the way, end quote. In 2012, the atheists, I think from Wisconsin, the so-called Freedom From Religion Foundation, filed a complaint about the run-through banners. Instead of writing inflammatory messages on the banners, you know, Bible verses that say, you can do all things through Christ, I guess that's inflammatory to some, the cheerleaders decided to write inspirational messages. Their attorney, Christian attorney, Jeremy Dice, also said, quote, and the cheerleaders looked to what they saw as the best source of inspiration, the scriptures, end quote. But instead of siding with the Constitution, the school district sided with the out-of-town atheists and banned the cheerleaders from writing Bible verses on the banners. So the cheerleaders and their parents sued the school district. Thank God they have the courage. In the October ruling, Char Justice Charles Krager wrote the following, he said, quote, given the nature of the expressive activity, a hand-drawn playful paper banner displayed by cheerleaders engaged in an extracurricular activity only momentarily before the football team runs through the banner, it is highly unlikely that the banner would appear to those in attendance at the game to contain a message endorsed by the school, 
end quote. And that's the news. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have anti-Christian complainers from Wisconsin who want to censor the free speech of Christian cheerleaders who have great courage and the school is fearful. Well, the school is so fearful of a lawsuit that they initiated the lawsuit. <laughs> Basically, they, they, they forced the cheerleaders to take down the banner. Well, that's just ridiculous to me. But besides those human actors in the story, where are the spirits in this story? I discern the spirit of God upon these young cheerleaders who not only want to encourage their brothers and sisters at their own high school with their own creative speech, but they want to use the Bible and Bible verses like, uh, you know, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I mean, to me, that is so encouraging and inspiring that it's got to be positive and it's got to be coming from what the Spirit of God has graced them and influenced them to do. And yet, the anti-Christian complainers, not only the ones in Wisconsin, we expect the atheists to be demon-possessed, but the school administrators, you people are Texas Christians, most of you, on that school board and you should be ashamed of yourselves for listening to the demonic spirits that would come against your own community's children who are trying to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter five. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name that you will give victory again as you did at the Ninth Circuit, give it now a full victory at the Texas State Supreme Court. That forever in Texas law, it may be enshrined as a case law precedent that Texas cheerleaders have freedom to talk about and lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, Florida wants felons to vote in future elections. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99. Or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod. Get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Get this important Bible study series for you and your church. Or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. You know, people ask me, chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Our last story today comes from The Blaze who says that Florida wants to let felons vote in future elections. Convicted felons in Florida could have their voting rights restored automatically upon completion of their sentences if a proposal passes this November. There's a group who call themselves Floridians for Fair Democracy, and they have gathered 
the required 766,200 signatures, over three quarters of a million signatures, that are required to get a proposal on the ballot that would restore voting rights to convicted felons automatically once they've completed their sentences. So they may not be able to vote from jail, but they can vote when they come back out on the street. Currently, felons can petition for clemency once the sentences are complete, but only a few hundred petitions per year are approved due to tighter restrictions implemented by Florida Governor Rick Scott and other state Republicans. Florida wants to let felons vote in future elections uh, because it may empower Democrats to vote for Democrat presidential candidates and this could impact future United States presidency elections, considering Florida's 25 electoral votes. But this proposal to pass in Florida has to get 60% public approval. So that's a pretty high bar. The proposal would exclude convicted murderers or sexual criminals who would still have the right to petition for their right to be restored, but wouldn't get it automatically. Permanent disenfranchisement of felons in Florida law dates back to 1868. At that time when it was enacted, the state also created a number of new felony crimes and expanded the list of crimes that would disqualify one from being able to vote. Some of the controversy surrounding the provision relates to the historic climate from which it was born. For example, this was right after the Civil War in the South and some lawmakers back then in Florida wanted to stop black people from voting. So, they enacted these bad laws and it may be good that some of them are being softened. However, Florida's significant freedman population during Reconstruction led to fears that minority upheaval in state and local government would cause unrest. And the impact of those laws remains since then. Opponents of restoring the vote to ex-felons cite the likelihood of felons to return to prison and a demonstrated lack of respect for the rule of law as reasons that they should not be allowed to vote automatically. Roger Clegg, president and general counsel of the Center for Equal Opportunity said, quote, if you're not willing to follow the law, then you can't have the right to make the law for everyone else. It doesn't make sense to have automatic restoration of rights because most people who walk out of prison are going to walk back in anyways, end quote. About one in four Florida inmates does return to prison within three years of release. And that's the news. Our thanks to The Blaze for that report. You know, I'm not sure where I stand on this. First of all, we should never have, and I think it's evil, to have any kind of restriction of voting based on people's race. But we should have restriction of voting based on people's immorality. And so the way you separate immorality from morality is, have they been convicted of being a lawbreaker? And so for someone to come out of jail, having served their time, I don't, I don't know when that should be lifted, but there should be a process in place for people to petition to get back their voting rights. And it should be a little easier than what it sounds like it was, but it should not be automatic. There should be humility and repentance. And that to me would signify the spirit of God has worked upon this person's soul and made them worthy of participating in making laws for other people. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 13, let every soul be subject to governing authorities for there is no authority except God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God for whoever resists the authority resists the ordinances of God. And those who resist bring judgment upon themselves. For rulers are not a terror to do uh, for, to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will have praise from that same authority. For he, the governing servant, is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath upon them who practice evil. 
Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll have a word to conclude the show. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled, How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now not just a book, but a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866 Obey God, and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17 part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us toll free at 866 Obey God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for donating when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Luke chapter three, he who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 